Okay, so here it is with a new cam chain in place. If you look very carefully at the top here, we still actually have some movement available in that gap. So there is actually some tension available. So the, the old chain was clearly worn. It's not surprising really as one of the valves had hit the piston previously and probably stretched the chain that way. Um, it's all connected up and it is actually a spring link chain if you look there I know it's a little out of focus but it's important if you do use a spring link chain to save stripping the engine down that you get the link the connecting link the right way round especially that little spring clip that holds it on so the closed end should face the direction of rotation if you put it the other way around the danger is of course you can catch the open end of the clip on something in its passage and it'll tear it off and next thing you know your cam chains come apart and it's all pretty bad. What I thought would be a good idea while we're here is just to explain the way the cam chain tensioner works because there seems to be a little confusion sometimes from new owners about uh, how the cam chain tensioner actually functions. Um, this is a 12 volt 90 so the earlier 6 volt stuff has a manually adjustable system which I won't cover at the moment so this is the automatic cam chain tensioner and if we look at the way it works, it has a rocker arm across here. So this pulley bears down against the chain, uh, causing tension and keeps it tight. On the other end of that arm that presses upwards is this plunger here. Yeah, it has a rubber tip on it and it can move up and down. As you can see, as it does so, it tensions the chain. Now, it's not just spring tension that holds that plunger. One of the things that normally happens for new, own, for new owners, sorry, get my teeth in properly, is that they drain the oil the first time round and they remove this bung here rather than the oil drain bung. And they say, oh, it's all gone bad, a spring fell out and then there was a little plastic piece and, and, and a metal bit and everything else and it's, it's all fallen apart and what do I do? Okay, so it's very, very simple. This bung here, behind it, there is a spring that bears against this piston plunger here so you can see the spring just pops it back up but that's not all there is to it there's a hydraulic element as well so in the bottom of this particular piece there is a little ball valve uh, a little steel ball in a captive valve and what that does is allows oil to pass through these holes and get beneath the piston itself and it sort of hydraulically locks that arm in place to stop it bouncing up and down against the spring because the spring tension isn't actually very much it's actually quite easy to move now one of the important things if you do take that bolt out and accidentally drain the oil out from behind it it's important you replace that oil which is why there is a hole here normally it has a 10 millimeter bolt in it uh, this one here so if you do take that out, you'll find a little bit of oil drains out with it. It's important to replace that oil. And the easiest way to do it is just to squirt in there with an oil can, a couple of cc's of oil. It won't completely fill it up because you can't. It'll, it'll drain out through this hole. But it's important you get as much oil in there as you can before whipping the bung screw back in as quickly as you can without letting it all drain out. So it may still flap around a little when you start up but at least it'll have charged the system as much as possible and then over time more oil will pass through these holes in the plunger get beneath that ball valve and lock that in position and essentially that's how the whole system works